Welcome everybody, Sports Book Review. It's Thursday, February 9th. This is the Puckheads. We're just down one player. All right, Scott Carter, as we called him last episode, Codeine Carter. By the way, that name stuck. A lot of people were really on to that. I had a lot of Twitter followers that, you know, thought it was kind of neat as well. But uh, he's not here today, so hopefully uh, Codeine Carter's making his way. Uh, with that being said, Dana Lane is in Las Vegas joining us. Dana, how's everything going? Uh, everything's great, Mike. Uh we're rolling along, waiting for the new expansion team to start. And uh, this NHL season has certainly gone by very, very quickly, uh, you know, which is good for us because we're ready to go for next year already. Well, Dana, I know that Montreal did not come through for me last uh, show. That was my only pick. How did you do on your three picks last show? Well, Mike, we had three picks and we went one, one, and one, mostly because Caroline couldn't uh, get one goal for us. But uh, anyway, it's not, uh, it's only a little bit of a loss with the juice, so we'll We'll take that and we'll move on to that in a card that we really like. And you know what? That's the only attitude to have when you want to be successful and disciplined and know that this is an absolute marathon. There's no sprint about it. So I really like that. All right, getting into today's action. Hit us with your first play, Dana. Let our viewers know where the edge and the angle might be tonight in the NHL to beat their bookie. Mike, our first play is going to be Toronto minus a dollar twenty-five over St. Louis, and Mike Yosin's taken over at the helm of the Blues is three and one. And it seems like every time you make a coaching change, there's always been a little bit of inspiration with the with their teams. But I, I think after three games or four games, I think you start to see teams go back to what they really are. All of a sudden, the Blues didn't start to get faster. Their goaltending didn't start to get better. Uh, I think that you'll see that team go back to what they what they really are, and that's an average hockey team, especially in this situation, Mike, against the Toronto Maple Leafs that's in a uh, revenge spot. And not only are they in a revenge spot, they got absolutely crushed by the Blues 5-1 uh, to one last week. So I like, I like Toronto in this spot, minus $1.25 over to St. Louis Blues, uh, a team that I think is going to come back down to earth. Yeah, that, that's a good breakdown. And like you said, after a coaching change, the first three or four games, you're playing on emotion, whether it was you're happy or you're, you're mad that the coach is gone. I think and once that emotion wears off and reality once again rears its ugly head, then, like you said, you're back to where you were. So I think that might be a sharp call. And then you throw revenge factor on top of that. Uh, that makes all the more sense to me. I'm going to hit everybody with my first pick. Uh, Dane, I'm going with the Flyers tonight. I'm going with Philadelphia at home. Uh, best shop line is my minus 110. I think this team's just going to have the edge. I think they're going to have it uh, mentally tonight. And I think the home crowd is really, really going to make the difference. What are your thoughts on the Flyers tonight? Do you think this team will, you know, try to find its way grinding into the playoffs? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting with them. Um, you know, there has been some r rumors, uh, silly enough, with a team that's, that had a 10-game winning streak. Um, there's been some rumors that Dave Haxtall's job might be in jeopardy. And it's very interesting now that you have a guy like Claude Julian that is out there. And a lot of people think maybe Lindy Ruff will be out there. And, you know, teams that think that they're right on the edge of making a huge impact might make a coaching change. So that might give you an inspired effort. Uh, even though, you know, we talked about teams that made coaching changes. Well, what about teams that anticipate maybe a coaching change having an inspired effort? So I, I definitely can see where you're coming from on that. I still like Dave Haxtell. I, I love this the, a guy that doesn't kind of he, he plays around with his lines a little bit too much. But uh, for me, I, I think Philadelphia is is probably primed to, to go on a go on a little bit of a run at least. Well, I think so too because, you know, there's just no way you're going to pull off a 10-game run like they did and then just go south and stay south. I mean, there's something inside. The ingredients are there to make success because it was obvious in the 10-game run. All right, Dana, hit us with your second pick for the viewers. Your first one was Toronto. What do you got for us on the second? Uh, second, we're just going to ride a streak. Um, the Detroit and Washington and their last six meetings, five of those games have gone over one with a push. So we're going to run that, ride that streak under five and a half minus a dollar thirty-five. And this is just this is a Capitals team that is just coming off of a shutout against Carolina, uh, and their goals against average is now at two point zero four. So even though they're extremely potent offensively, uh, it's really hard not to look at unders, especially against. Teams that can't can't score on a consistent basis like the, the uh, Detroit Red Wings. Brandon Holpe is uh, against Detroit is two. His goals against is one point seven five. So he's even better against Detroit. And I just think 
Uh, there's not a lot of offensive weapons, and the only offensive weapon really that you have to worry about on a nightly basis is Dylan Larkin, and he's in a slump. So we're going to go under 5.5, minus $1.35. You can find that at five dimes. Uh, Detroit, Washington, under five and a half. Yeah, that, that this is liable to be a four to nothing shutout from Washington. You know, Detroit is still who they are, and probably going to miss the you know the big dance this year. All right, my second pick. You know what, Dane? I'm I'm going right back to him. I don't think I think this team has got to just absolutely snap out of it. And I think the funk that they're in, all right, is more mental than anything else. Uh, and again, I want your opinion on it. But I'm going to go with the Montreal Canadiens. I think the Habs are going to have to get it done. Minus one forty nine. Uh, what the hell is going on there? And, and then what do you think as far as moving forward? Is this a team we might want to look to put the caution light on? Well, Mike, I've always had the caution light on them. I, I, they started the season nine and one. Um, and since then, I mean, you can't say they're a 500 hockey team, but they're certainly not one that resembles a Stanley Cup contender. And they've been getting beat at home. And I, and I look at this line against Arizona and, it, it kind of it kind of sends a little bit of mixed messages, um, you know, when you use your experience and and see how that uh, when you're looking at a Montreal line and you've been looking at these lines as long as I have, I thought maybe we'd see in the 60, 70 range. And with this a dollar forty nine, you know, I'm not saying all these odd make odds makers are right. They're they're wrong a lot more in the NHL than just about any other sport. But this line does seem a little odd to me. Arizona is playing. Uh, with renewed vigor, I guess. Uh, they won their, their dad's trip. I'm a huge fan of Mike Smith. Um, you know, this is a game I kind of would stay away from, and I, I'm just, I don't know what we're going to get out of Montreal when we get to the playoffs, because let's keep in mind, Carey Price did not have a full season under his belt last year, and now all of a sudden, not only are you asking him to have a full season, you're completely leaning on him to take you to the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, and that's very well said. You know, um, I think more than anything, the team just has to gather themselves. They need to have a players-only meeting. They got to dig deep and find out where and why this inconsistent pattern, you know, just remains to be uh, you know, the thorn in their side. As you said, nine and one to start the NHL season. They look sharp. Maybe they got a little bit too big for their britches. I don't know. All right, viewers, you heard it. I've got two picks tonight that are solid. Dana Lane is riding Toronto minus one twenty-five and Washington and. Detroit, the under five and a half set at minus 135. Dana, thanks so much for all of your input and for giving our viewers the edge to cash those NHL tickets. Uh, it's been kind of quiet in here without Codeine Carter, but I'm sure he'll be back sooner than later. Have a great day, Dana. All right, you too, guys. Best of luck. Do your research before you bet. Check out our ratings guide to see which books have the best ratings and sign-up bonuses. Open up several accounts. Shop for lines at sbrodds.com. Always be ahead of the game.